All right, today's video is going to change the world for a lot of people. And those of you who have struggled with getting the printer settings uh, on these Brady RFID systems to work, um, I think you're going to like what I have to show today, which I have a an easier way to bringing all of your printer configurations back to a kind of a baseline functional state in case you've screwed them up. And we've all done it. Uh, you go in there out of desperation to try, try to get the thing to uh, either print more centered or to increase the power setting or whatever it is you've done, you've messed it up. Uh, in my case, I didn't really do it. On, uh, I didn't mess it up. I, I just previously had been doing some different tags. So these are very, very different in terms of what settings are required for the printer than these. And if I just go ahead and I swap out the material now, when I hit feed, you'll see it does stuff that I don't want it to do. There should I, I don't want to ever see back feed on these kinds of tags and it stops in the wrong place and all of that. So there's more than one setting to make all this magic work. And rather than trying in the past to identify all of those individual settings to make on the screen, or if we have a, um, an Ethernet connected one, you can open up the browser page and you can go out to these individual um, you know, settings and try to make the changes here. But it's a lot of work. And in the end, what we really want to be able to do is uh, send down some magic file that contains all of the configuration commands that are necessary for the Brady RFID system to work. Now, there are some subtle changes as you go from small to medium to high, excuse me, from small to medium to large tag size, and also low memory to high memory. You may want to change the power, which I think is this one, right? But pretty much the rest of the settings are going to be more or less the same. Um, they have the same distance between the notches, all of that good stuff. So. Um, there's a way, and I may show this in a separate uh, video, how one can generate this using the driver. But for right now, just accept the fact that I have this file and I'm going to present it to you. And I'm going to have one that's going to be for the alloy medium size, low memory, medium size, high memory, and large and small variations on that as well. And you can take this file and send it down to the printer all at one, uh, one, uh, one step, right? All right, so how do we do that? That's actually a nice feature in the Siegel printer drivers that are used by um, Brady in these uh, Datamax and Sato printers. So just open up Windows and in your little search thing, put in printers and scanners and find your printer driver. And I'm just going to double check and make sure this is actually on the Ethernet port. It is. That's good. Now, if you go to the Tools tab and under Action, you'll see Send File to Printer. And I'm going to click on that. And now I need to go find this file. Where did I put this silly file? Uh, I think it is this one right here. For Datamax, it ends in CFG. right? And as soon as I do this, I'm going to try to get some of this out of the way here. Uh, I want you to see what's if there's any change here. It might see that it's receiving a file, and I do want to make sure you guys see that. So as soon as I say open, it should send down. You just saw a little blink there that that uh, indicated it received some commands. Now there's it's a it's a print job, but it doesn't print anything. It just sends down configuration commands. And now let's see what happens when I go ahead and I hit print. Um, it looks like it. It reset uh, after it sent all those commands. It did a reset. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit feed. And I'm not going to do anything different. Let's see if it actually changes. There you go. See that? So it's now stopping in the correct position. And it doesn't back feed. So I made all of these changes in heat settings, uh, label length, power level. All of these settings were done with just sending down one file. It's a magic file, right? But it's going to really simplify uh, your process for when things start to go haywire and you have no idea how to get functionality back in, 
in play here. Go ahead and send these files down. I will put links on the support website where you can find them. They may still need some, um, some you know, configuration on your part because things like, in this case here, this section is row adjust, column adjust. There's a separate video on how to center your printed text left, right, and up, down. And every printer is a little bit different. So the files I'm going to put up there are probably going to be just baseline functionality. They may not print exactly where you want, but they will print. And then you can go ahead and, and do that kind of custom configuration on your printer because each printer is going to have a mechanical tolerance that's going to require a slightly different row adjustment, column adjustment. Okay, Then you can save that file and, and now you'll never need to do that again at your site if it goes haywire again. Um, you go ahead and send this file down and it should be perfect. All right. I hope that uh, makes life simpler for a bunch of folks. And again, go out to the the support website is uh, idintegration.net and then find the Brady RFID system. And I will put these um, <clears throat> I will put these links under the either the hardware or the software section here. You'll see the link also in the video section for where to where to find these files and how to send them down.